Welcome everyone, Sunday night, August 19th, 2012. My son Christopher is joining me for this very uh, special service on this Sunday night to carry you through the week. Many people don't have a regular church that they attend or they are just not physically able to make it out to uh, an assembly and a gathering. So I hope this service blesses you and uh, it carries you through the week. Let me bring you a few updates. We just got home. My wife and I from a wonderful time in Alpena, Michigan. And I just want to remind everyone over at Livestream Tiny Chat, our live broadcast now is Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Joining me tonight, uh, and I hope, I sincerely hope and pray that this message blesses you, is my son Christopher. He is 18 years old, and he is going to read from the King James Authorized Version Bible. He's going to read Matthew 13. Go ahead, Chris. <clears throat> the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came up, came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah's which saith by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receives that seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and and in with joy receiveth. Yet hath he not root in himself, but Dareth for a while, for when tribulation of persecution ariseth because of the word by in, he is offended. <coughs> he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word in the care of his world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into a good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto him, saying, The kingdom 
of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears, tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Strong, <clears throat> excuse me, strong message there, Chris. Strong message there. Now, you're, you being a young person, I want to get you back in the camera. Let's see, how can we do this? All right, that's fine, Chris. There you are. Now, little difficult, little difficult technology here. You being a young person, what do you think uh, young people your age face today in the world as far as it, it being a big, uh, uh, a scary place sometimes for a young person and just getting out in the world and getting their first jobs and uh, getting away from school and getting out into the job force and then peer pressure and how many of your friends really Chris, know the love of God and the price that Jesus paid on the cross? And how can we open their eyes uh, and unseal, unplug their ears where they can hear the word and the truth and know that there is hope? There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be... Um, de depression is a big part for young people today to be depressed about. And fear belongs to the enemy. Fear belongs to Satan and when you have Jesus in your heart uh, Yahweh God did not give us a spirit of fear what do you think some of the uh, big uh, obstacles are facing young people today well to get on like um, believing in God and everything I think most of like people that I meet and even some of my friends are uh, like I don't know I think that they don't want to take the time to just even get to know like about the Bible or about learning about God or anything like that so they don't really know anything ab about it so they're in like kind of denial I guess you would say. Would that stem from a lot of it from uh, the public school system do you think or there, there's no more prayer in school and uh, um, God's kind of been removed out of the school? And well it's really like whether you want to take the time to do that or if you're interested or not and I, just some people are just oblivious to really what's really going on in the world and they're just yeah, like you say, it's everything to do with, like, the government and everything, and that we're just set to live this kind of life, I guess. Could it be also the parents are not uh, going uh, to church, or they're not in the Word, they're not in the Bible at home? Maybe they're uh, busy, or they, they're non-believers themselves? Well, yeah. That could be a big part of it, huh, Chris? Yes. Now, the wheat and the tares, do you understand that, uh, Chris, that part of it? Um, I didn't know exactly what it was. Mean. Well, we are living, uh, as you know, Chris, in the, the very end times, the very end days, and there's a great separation that uh, needs to take place. And the tares are, need to be, are going to be removed, and they're going to be burned in the fire. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about the lake of fire. And that is for those that just uh, have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have not come to salvation. And there's so many people like that. Because I think more pastors and more Christians need to get out. And like, like talking to your friends. I've talked to a few of your friends uh, about, um, about God and about reading the Bible. Because I don't think they're hearing it from their, their home, their families. Or, and they're sure not getting it from school. And time is so short that we need to now get out and spread the, the news as much as we can uh, in these very last days because we're seeing all the events unfolding around the world, the earthquakes and uh, the natural disasters. And 
the uh, uprisings in the Middle East, everything that I report here on YouTube. And what, a lot of your friends don't see that because they don't cover that on mainstream media news. But now is the time to reach out uh, when, when a young person, uh, your age, Chris, or, or older or younger, when this big world seems like it's just uh, too much and they get uh, depressed, just reach out and call out to God because he's waiting there. He's just waiting there to pick them up in in his arms and just do nothing. Give them what they need, and that's love. Don't you think a lot of young people today just need to be loved? Yeah. They need a hug. I agree. They need to be loved, and maybe it's not on purpose. Their parents are just busy, uh, maybe single parents and trying to cover two jobs or working parents and the family unit is kind of broken down and they, they just need a hug and when all seems hopeless uh, Jesus is your hope he is your hope and he's waiting with his arms out to give all young people a great big hug and pull them closer to him and you and I Chris and all our viewers out here we can help and we can assist in that way by just reaching out to young people just reach out to young people and let them know that God is there, and Jesus loves them, and He cares, and He just wants to, just wants to love on them. All right, I want to thank you, Chris, for joining me today, and uh, I guess with my son Chris, and he's the one that made me that beautiful cross. It's behind me, the the gold cross on the wall with the watchtower. That's where did you tell tell how you made that? Where'd you make that? Um, with my ex girlfriend in a ceramic place at the for, from the church, though, right? Um, yeah. From her some church that she went to? Yeah. All right, and I treasure it. It's very beautiful. He's back. My son's back home with me now, and uh, uh, I just hope this uh, service tonight has blessed you. Again, trumpetofgodministries.com. Uh, I don't, uh, this is where at the end of our service we would pass around the, the basket, but I don't believe in tithing a percent of your wages. I never did. I believe you have to be a cheerful giver, that's what God expects, a cheerful giver, not where you feel you have to give or you're obligated to give a percentage of your wages. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that's what that was meant for. But our ministry, we get out and we reach uh, the people of the inner cities, um, and we uh, depend on you, the viewer, uh, for your support. And if you find it in your heart, if you feel led by the Holy Spirit to give to our ministry, the link will be below. God bless everyone. Say goodbye, Chris. Bye. God bless.